I have heard some doozies in my day, my friend. Uh, and I actually, I, I think I know, I, I think I, I've heard this on Twitter before because I've got a lot of Steelers fans that follow me, or at least I follow a lot of Steelers fans yeah. that say Mitch Trubisky can lead the Steelers. Now I have to hear from a, the mouth of a Bears fan that saw this man and said, you know, I, I had certain feelings about it. So why do you think Mitch Trubisky was done wrong? Okay. So we have to go way back in the pages mm-hmm. of time, back to the beginning. All right, <laughs> this is this goes back to the Super Bowl thing. Yes, the Vikings haven't won a Super Bowl, but the Bears won one. So we're always trying to recreate that team. Mm-hmm. You guys can start fresh every single time and come up with something new and not be tied down by the past. The Bears have been yep. tied down by the past. What do we do? We got cute with our quarterback selection, and we said – we're going to get this tough Pollock. It sounds good. You know, Mitch Trubisky, that's, that's, that's classic. That's yes. classic Bears mentality. You know, we bring him in, and the first thing we do is we tie him in with Matt Nagy, who all these things are going right. And if you took, take a look at the record, mm-hmm. you know, we've been, we went to the playoffs two out of three years. Yep. People yeah. Just, a lot of people just, forget that. A lot of people forget that. And again, we're in one of the tougher divisions in football. We got the Packers, we got the Vikings, and yeah, the Vikings on a, you know, on a good day can be pretty darn good when they had Mm -hmm. Stafford. The Stafford could surprise some people. Mm -hmm. Mr. Trubisky had almost no direction. That first year when we, when we played the Packers and that first year uh, with uh, Khalil Mack, it was his first game. Yep. And we, we were just destroying annihilating them everyone forgets that the defense is really what led a lot of that effort Mm -hmm. special teams mr bisky uh was was kind of forced to make plays and do things that he really never did in north carolina Mm -hmm. okay he did not do he he was uh, there's the jokes he can't throw to the left or whatever (laughs) i remember those on, I made a like, couple. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, listen. And you look at the, the playing field and actually the ones that he did throw to the left, people caught. He just didn't do it often. He was just more right. You know, he just looked off to the right a lot more. And that's where uh, Alan Robinson was usually going to be. Yep. So that's the direction he was going to look. Alan Robinson didn't, does, by the way, doesn't really like to line up on the left. He does every mm-hmm. once in a while, but that's usually where he's at. So he's expected to absolutely lead this team in the wake of Matt Nagy's leadership. Mm. Matt Nagy did not have leadership. He did not have that locker room. It was a bunch of guys having a good time. And Matt Nagy was kind of the guy, you know, everyone's like making a joke and everyone's laughing. And then Matt nope. Nagy's like, ha yeah, that's funny. And everyone's like, dude, we weren't talking to you. Yeah. Like that's, that's <laughs> the way that locker room was. Mm-hmm. They created a lot of their own success. Mm-hmm. Yes, Nagy had a few good plays and whatnot, but uh, Trubisky was tasked with not only coming in as a fresh quarterback, not only with no offensive line. True. No offensive line. True. That has been the story of the Bears since the beginning of time. Yep. When yep. when have we had a good – I'm talking like Steelers, good offensive line. Dallas Cowboys, good mm-hmm. offensive line. I, it's so hard to put together though when you think about it because a lot of, like I've seen uh, both sides of the argument where you get like the Dallas Cowboys who literally I think it was like four or five years ago Brent that like every pick they first round pick they had was an offensive lineman and like everybody was laughing at them but all of a sudden they had like the best offensive line in football for like five years and it was like huh that's kind of weird you know investing high capital into your offensive line tends to help you out but at the same time then the Vikings go and draft a first round center and now they literally just announced today that they're not going to pick up his fifth year option so it's like it's a double edged sword do you and then last year too it's like um i want to say it was yeah Trey Smith for the Chiefs was like a sixth round pick one of the highest graded guards in all of football then you have um Creed Humphrey their starting center a second round pick so it's like where do you find these guys? So I get the frustration, man. I, I I was a Vikings fan. We finally got like three players where I'm just looking at, I'm like, okay, you know, we three players out of five isn't bad, but still like if you have pressure on the inside at all, it's tough for any quarterback.